Hello everyone. Welcome to our video series on data science using Python. So in this video, we will be focusing on one of the fundamental concepts in programming that is variables and data types. So in this video, we'll see the naming variables. Then we'll see the basic data types and how to identify data type of an object then verify if an object is of that certain data type or not then course the object to a new data type okay means to convert the object to a new data type okay so let's begin so let's just start with the naming variables so there are some few five to six points in which should we must be this must take in care whenever we are naming a variable when we are naming our variables okay so the first point is that value assigned to a variable using an assignment operator okay equal it means that whenever you are assigning suppose a value to a variable so it should be using this operator one this assignment operator equal only, okay single equal the second point is that variable name should be short and descriptive okay it means that whenever you are defining a variable then you should keep it short and in short only you should just make it descriptive also means the user should understand about it that what type of variable for what purpose the variable has been created okay then the third point is avoid using variable names that class with inbuilt functions okay means we should not give a variable name to uh, means we should not class with a function name or suppose if there is any inbuilt, inbuilt function suppose there is print type so we shouldn't give names like that okay or suppose if there is for which is already a keyword in python so we should not give we should not use keyword as the name of the variables okay then the fourth point is that they are designed to indicate the intent of its use to the end user it means that their purpose the purpose of creating a means meaningful variable is that they just means from the name it should be clear that what purpose for what purpose the variable has been created to the end user okay then the fifth point is that avoid one character variable names okay why to avoid one character variable names because the one character variable names are usually used in iterations looping constructs and inside the functions okay so we should not use uh, one word variables one more one character variable names okay globally we could use inside it a function when we are constructing a loop then we can use or when we are doing the iteration then they are used okay so these were some points we should must take care when we are naming a variable now the next point is that variables can be alphanumerical it means that we can name our variable like this we can keep it h with a capital okay and we can keep all the characters of our variable in lower case also they both are different okay then we can add numbers at the end of our variables also so this is also okay we can do that but from this example you will think that you can just give a variable name in the starting also so no you can't give a name in the starting because it will give you an syntax error okay so the numbers which you if you want to give you can give at the end but you cannot start a number means a variable with a number it should be always starting with a alphabet only and that alphabet can be in lower case or upper case okay now the only special character which we can use is the underscore okay So suppose we can start with underscore we can end with an underscore also okay 
but variable names should not begin or end with underscores even though both are allowed but it is not a good practice so always try to keep the underscore in between means you can give like this suppose if it is you have to give employee age so you can just use the underscore to part employee and age differently and then combine it so you can use like this and you can give like this so this will be true okay this these two are also allowed means you can start and end with also but it's not allowed means they are allowed but they are this is not a good practice okay now let's see commonly used case types in python okay this means that what are the commonly accepted case types which are which most of the people frequently use okay so first one is camel case so camel case uh, it is like this suppose we have to give the age of a employer so we will give like this age m and then 45 then it could the a could be in uh, upper case also so then also it will be like this so this is the camel case okay then there is one snake case in the snake case we will part the two words with an underscore so this is like this h underscore m 55 then we can give like this also a capital then m 55 then one more case is that is most frequently used that is the pascal one in which h age a and emp e will be capital okay like this so these were some commonly you accepted case types okay now one more thing is there that we can assign values to multiple variables in a single line so how we can do that let's see What we did here, we just wrote all the variables by separating with comma, physics, comma, chemistry, comma, mathematics. Okay. Then what we did, we just give the value in that sequence only. Suppose we got in physics if 89, so 89, then in chemistry 19, and then in maths 75. Okay. And then after that, if you'll use that particular uh, means these variables separately also, then also the value will be same only. Means if you have given for chemistry, if you are given 19, then will come up with 90 only okay so you can assign values to multiple variables in a single line so now let's see the data types so we have some basic data types with their description values and representations okay so let's see all of them so we will start with the boolean so the first data type is boolean which represents two values of logic and associated with conditional statements okay so they have two values with in the boolean there are two values true and false and how the booleans are represented in python with bool b w o l bool okay then there is integer okay so integers could be positive and negative whole numbers okay the values are the set of all integers from the negative to the positive okay including zero and what is the representation int in okay then there are complex which contains real and imaginary parts uh, suppose x equals 1j the values it which contains are the set of all complex numbers okay and the representation is complex then there is float they are real numbers okay and the values are floating point numbers means all the numbers which will be in the point that will come in the range means that will come in the data type flow and representation is flow. then there is the string so the characters enclosed between the single or double quotes that will come inside the string 
if suppose if it is like this also means if it is single character also but it is inside the single or double so that will be also considered as a string there are no characters okay so the values are sequence of characters and the representation is str okay str stands for string okay now let's see the two types of typed languages okay so there are statically typed languages and then there is dynamically typed languages so in the statically typed languages uh, they are the languages in which the type of variable is known at compile time means in which we when we are declaring the variable then only we have to mention the type of that variable okay uh, and the second point is the type of variables declared upfront okay it means that suppose if you are declaring a variable so first of all you have to declare the type of that variable then only you can assign value that to that variable okay and that type of examples of that statically type of languages are java c and c plus plus then there is dynamically typed languages in this type of languages the type of variable is known at the runtime okay means when the value is means when the variable is created so at the runtime whatever the value is it store in that variable it will then automatically get defined in that data type okay so the memory is allocated for that particular data type the second point is that variables type need not to be declared okay means we do not need to externally just write the type of a uh, data type of that variable okay the interpreter or compiler automatically takes it uh, example of dynamically typed languages are python javascript php okay now now let's just see that how to identify an object data type okay so with the type function we can identify it so let's just do what let's create one employee name and in this name let's just store rahul then there is age then let's create a height in which let's give 167.8 and now let's just do what let's just print a type of so let's just check this object employee name that which type of value this object employee name has okay so you can see the type by using the print function so what you will do you will just write the print function and inside the print function you will take the type function and you write the name of the object inside the type function and then it will give you the so here we are getting the output class str it means the data type which this is object has it is of class string okay uh, now let's just check for age so now let's just check for the object age so for when we check for the object age so it is giving us class int means it is of integer data type the value the age object has it has an integer data type it is an integer data type okay now what we can do we can verify it also using the identity operator is so let's see that how we can verify it for verifying it what we can do first we can then we'll apply is inside the print function only type age then is let's check for str so now it is giving us false because it is of not that data type okay so now let's just give integer so now it is returning us true because yes it is of integer data type okay so this is the way using the is operator you can check means we can verify also then we can convert an object to a new data type also okay so how we can convert that for that first of all i'll print the type of age okay and now we are going to convert age which is an integer data type to a string data type okay so let's just see 
for that first of all we have to create an uh, variable also so i'll create str underscore age and in that i'll use the str function and in that i'll keep the age now in this we will check for str age so earlier the age was just teaser then we just use the str function okay for the conversion of the age to string and we store it in an object str underscore age and now when we are checking the type of that str underscore age so now it is giving us a string so we have converted our age into a string but it has some limitations also now what are that limitations that limitation is that suppose uh, this was an age so what we can do uh, let's take a name here let's first change this now what we'll do we will just convert this uh, this rahul into integer okay so we have to convert this rahul into integer so what we will do we'll just use the print function then type method for checking and then we'll put our employee name here okay so now if we'll check it it is an integer value okay now we have to convert it into an int value so int name equals then int inside the integer will means we want to convert this Rahul into integer format okay and then so now as you can see that it is giving us a value error that because Rahul is a string value so it cannot be converted into an integer okay if it was 55 so we just converted 55 into a string value if in the rahul suppose for example if it was 55 so now then it will get converted okay so now in the employee name there was 55 so 55 was in the string format then we converted that into an integer format so that we can do but if there are names so these are some limitations also okay so i hope you understood about variables and data types okay so thank you for watching the video we'll see you in the next video